We're thankful this morning that you have tuned in with us by way of YouTube, television, Facebook, and even TikTok. We're mindful of the fact that it is the Lord's Day, and we're thankful that we're able here to give God our first and best. He has been so good to us. This morning, we hope, trust, and pray that the lesson will be beneficial to you as we deal with 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 7, as David was a man after God's own heart, and God looks at the heart. He does not look at the outer man as we do, but he looks at the heart. And that's wonderful because sometimes people can misjudge you, and, uh, but God, he looks at the heart. As we start our worship this morning, I want to turn your symbols to number 480, 480, 480. <clears throat> Please stand, 480. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, for a foretaste of glory divine, the heir of salvation, precious of God, born of his spirit, washing his blood. This is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Cause this is my story, this is my song. I will praise in my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture, now first in my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Cause this is my story, this is my song. I will praise in my Savior all the day long. Cause this is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. Uh, I am my Savior, and happy and blessed. I'm just watching and waiting, looking above. I'm filled with his goodness, just lost in his love. Cause this is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all, all the day long. Cause this is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Man, let us pray. Holy God, as we come before you this morning, thanking you for the blessing to worship you. Amen. And Father, I pray that we will remember that worship begins in the spirit. Amen. It is engaged in the soul Amen. and manifested in our bodies. Amen. And Father, as we worship today, we pray that you are glorified, Amen. that Jesus is lifted up and glorified. We pray that the saints will be edified and sinners will be evangelized and the devil be terrified. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Our first lesson will be here number 286. Two eight six. Two eight six. I'll have it. Let's see. Wonderful story of love. 
Tell it to me again. A wonderful story of love. Weighty immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it. Shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinners all want to believe it. A wonderful story of love. Oh, it's so wonderful. Sing again now, wonderful. Well, wonderful. Wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love. Though you are far away, a oh, wonderful story of love. Still he do call today, calling from Calvary's mountain, down from the crystal bright fountain, in an Adana creation, a wonderful story of love. Oh, it's so wonderful. Say again now, wonderful. Well, wonderful. Wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love. Jesus provides a rest, a wonderful story of love. For all the pure and blessed, rich in those mansions above us, with those who've gone on before us, singing the rapturous chorus, a wonderful story of love. Oh, it's so wonderful. Say again, how wonderful. Well, wonderful. Wonderful story of love. Oh, it's so wonderful. Say again, how wonderful. Well, wonderful. Wonderful story of love. Amen. Our next let's be here number 148. Once again, next lesson, number 148. Have it, let's sing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my lord and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again and he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my lord and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again and he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by Oh, what a love between my Lord and I keep falling in love with him 
over and over and over and over again and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my lord and i keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again amen before scripture reading and prayer goes to hymn number 470 Again, before scripture reading in prayer, 470. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have it, let's sing. I heard an old, old story how the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a rich like me. I heard about his groaning. Of his precious blood's atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and hear my broken spirit. I then obeyed his blessed command and brought the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me when his redeeming blood. He loved me, yeah, I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he's built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing in the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. <clears throat> he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading will be coming from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses 6 through 7. It's 1 Samuel 16, 6 through 7. We have it. And the Bible reads, And it came to pass, 
when they were to come. And then he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. May there be a special blessing to the readers, seers, and doers of his word. Now may we stand for this morning's main prayer. Let us pray. O oh, heavenly gracious Father, which in heaven, holy be your name. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together on this first day of the week to worship you in a manner that be pleasing and accepting our sight in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, for we know it's your will that we are here today. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, that we had the opportunity to continue to live a life and describe to us that kingdom which is in heaven as we live on this earth. We thank you, Lord, for the sunshine and rain that you had given to us Amen. to replenish the earth. Yes. And we pray, O oh Lord, for all those who are here this morning, that you will bless them, O oh Lord, Amen. that they continue to show their gratitude towards you. Amen. For we know it was you that made this all possible by giving your son Jesus to come and die on the cross for our sin. Amen. For we were lost in our sin. And that we have forgiven that we may be with him as we get baptized in his name, that we may live a life for you. And to be an example to the world. We pray, Lord, be with those who are sick. We ask special prayer for Sister, Col uh, Sister Col Colston, who are having back problems at this time. We pray, Lord, for <clears throat> uh, Sister Carmely, who also had her leg amputated. We pray for Anthony Thomas, who is recovering from his uh, uh, brain uh, uh, illness that he had. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be all those who are sick. We pray for those who've been going through trials and tribulations with gunshot wounds, uh, people killing one another. We pray, Lord, that you be with those special families that went through all that uh, disasters and we pray, Lord, for those who had disaster on the ship last week, uh, or the bridge went down on that barge. And we pray, Lord, that you abuse the family who lost their loved one. We pray, Lord, for strength, for sometimes we fall short of their glory. We ask for your word, which will help us withstand any temptation of Satan, and especially with the help of the Holy Spirit, that's help us also to guide and direct our steps. We pray, Lord, you be a brother more if you bring us the lesson of our bless him and the family who continue to preach the word to a dying sick world. We pray, O Lord, that we do everything according to your will, the same praise to your name. Do you not bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our next song will be here, number 589. 589. <coughs> Five, eight, nine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Five, eight, nine, I'll have it last thing. <clears throat> what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. When we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the long. When we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. <coughs> oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, 
how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Where we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the loss. Where we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the end of that stain on what have i to dread what have i to fear leaning on the everlasting arms i have blessed peace with my lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms when we're leaning on jesus leaning on jesus Safe and secure from all the loss. Where we're leaning on Jesus, leaving on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting loss. Where we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all the loss. Where we're leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Amen. Please mark your hymn books at 662. There'll be a song in the text in 662. Then after that, Blair Morris is going to sing the text before he comes up. 712. 712. Please stand. 712. I'll have it. Trouble sometimes come here. Freedom is hard. We'll fear freedom. We all hold it. Nan said, Stay. Humble your heart to God. Save from the chastening rod. Seek the way here from far. Christians away. My Jesus is coming soon. Morning or night. Oh no, many will meet their dooms, the trumpets will sound, and all the, the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, just going where no one dies, ever we're bound. Love are so many cold, losing their home of gold. This in God's word is told, keep us abound. When the signs come to pass, near in the end at last, it will come very fast, trumpets will sound. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will meet their dooms, the trumpets will sound. And all of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, just go away where no one died, heaven were bound. Troubles will soon be all happy forevermore when we meet on that sure freedom all care I just rising up in the sky telling this world goodbye home where we then will fly glory to share my Jesus is coming soon morning or night or noon many will make the dooms, the trumpets will sound, and all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meaning, the sky just going where no one died, him a word bound. Amen. And we're so thankful to know that he's coming, and he's coming soon. It is our job as members of the Lord's Church to. Make sure we're ready 
and do all we can to help others get ready to meet the Lord. It's a wonderful thing when you're ready. It's a wonderful thing when you're ready for a test. You know, you go in there and you're just ready. You, you have studied and you have prayed, making sure you do the best you can on that test, and you're ready. And that's a test, of course, in life that we take every day of our lives. Uh, we mentioned last week in 2 Corinthians 13, verse number 5, that we are to examine ourselves, make sure we're in the Lord. And Paul says in that same book, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 10 and following, that you cannot compare yourself with others. It is not wise. You compare yourself with the word of God. When we compare ourselves with others, uh, we all have sin. You know, sometimes we won't be like this person and that person. No, just be like yourself. Be the best self you can be in the Lord. This morning, as you see our topic of our uh, lesson this morning, as Brother John read it good, so good, and you're hearing in First Samuel chapter 16, verses number 6 and 7. As we read this morning, that God, he looks, he peeks in at the heart. You see, often people say, well, God knows my heart. You better believe he knows your heart. You better believe he knows your heart. He knows the good, bad, and the ugly. And so God knows my heart, but I, I want my heart to be right all the time before my God. He knows my heart. I want you to notice what we see here in 1 Samuel chapter 16. It is here that Saul, of course, was a disaster to himself and a disaster to people around him, King Saul. Remember when they said to God, we want a king. We want a king like the kings around us. We want to be like the Joneses, if you will. Not Sister Mildred Jones, but like the Joneses, Sister Jones. No pun intended. We want to be like the nations around us. You know how we are. But we forget sometimes that we are God's own people. We're called out of the world uh, you know, from darkness into light. And we, we, we're, we're different from the world, and sometimes the world treats us different, but that's all right. We're, we're, we're different because we're trying to embrace God's, the Lord's attitude. We let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. We want to have a heart of God, the heart that God will have us to have. We'll see this morning how David was a man after God's own heart. Now notice, Saul, he was a disaster to himself and those around him. We need not to be a disaster to ourselves and those around us. We need to be Christ-like. Sometimes members of the Lord Church have not gotten themselves together. They're, they're still, uh, like we said earlier, they, they still are uh, actually critical and, uh, of everybody and, and everything, and they don't have themselves together themselves. Don't y'all get quiet on me. He was a disaster because he did not obey God fully, and that's what God wants us to do, obey him fully. But God knew that if he... Had David as king, David would obey him fully. Would, would David be perfect? No, he would not be perfect. But he was one when he, would, when he got off track, he would get back on track. And that's what the child of God does. No, we're not perfect. Yes, we sin. But when we get off track, we find ourselves getting far from God. We want to come back. We draw nigh to God in James chapter 4, verse number 1 and following. And he would draw nigh to us. The child of God knows in Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, that sin, what it does is separate us from God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be separated from God. South Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 7 through 9, ye which are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus will come with the shout of his angel, taking vengeance on those that know not God, those that obey not the gospel. We're trying to get people to obey the, the gospel. And those that have obeyed the gospel to be, become close to God, not walk far away from God like Peter did. Peter, he followed God once they arrested Jesus. He followed Jesus, but he followed him afar off. And that's how we are as Christians. We just want to do enough to get by. Lord, help us all to more, be more devoted to God. Help us to be, and examine yourself, see whether or not you're more devoted. Don't worry about the next person. Just be concerned about you because it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. 
the second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and following, ye which are troubled, arrest with us when the Lord Jesus shall come with a shadow of his angel, taking vengeance on those that know not God. Did you hear that? That know not God and obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ that will be separated from him. That's, that's separation. I don't want to be a part of me. See, when we sin, that's a separation, separation from God that we have. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, your sins have separated you from God. And he will not hear your prayer. Not that he can't hear, but he will not hear. We need the prayer of each other. James 5, verse number 16 and following, the, the fact that fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. The older I get, I realize that I must preach it like it is and like it is. Whether people like it or not, amen. amen. I preach without any fear nor favor. I know I need to do better. You need to do better. Even after church, we need to do better. Amen. You need to be more concerned about doing what God would have us to do. We need to get close up to God, close up with him. And that's what David realized. He realized when he sinned, he needed to get back with God, close to God. That's what the child of God does. We'll see this shortly in the Bible as, as we look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 6 and following. It, it, it covers that so beautifully. And so Saul, he did not do what God told him to do. God told him when you go out and you go to war, don't back, bring back in the spars or anything. You know, he was to kill the leaders and all that. And, and saw he wanted to do what he wanted to do. He wanted to pick and choose what he wanted to do. We can't do that when it comes to God. God knows best, doesn't he? He, he knows best. Amen. You know, saying, you know, when you're raising your children, you understand this. When uh, here, they are, here they are, they're young and they feel like they know more than you do when they get a certain age. When they become 14, 15, and 16, they don't listen to parents anymore. They listen to their friends. Yeah. Yeah. My friends said. Yeah. But that was back then when I was growing up. And then they said the internet said. Woo! <laughs> internet says. Oh. Instead of what Jesus says. Right. 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 Notice. Saul, he wanted to do what he wanted to do. He reminds us. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 25, verse number 24. He, he reminds us in the New Testament. Remember of the people that had the talents, the one talent, the three talents, and the five talents? In Matthew chapter 25, look at verse number 24. This morning we'll be doing part one, and next week we'll be doing part two. And if that's not enough, we might do part three. Amen? Amen. God looks at the heart. Matthew 25, verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not scrawled. And I was angry, I was afraid, rather, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. See, Saul was like, and sometimes we're this way, the one talent man. Just disobedient. God told him what to do. But did what he felt like he wanted to do. That's what Saul did. The Bible says, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not scrawled. Thou also therefore be uh, to have been put my money to exchange us, and then at my coming, I should have received my own earthly. In other words, we have so much talent in the Lord's church, but we, we, we bury it. We bury it. I looked up white collar and blue, 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 blue collar people, workers, and sometimes white collar look down on blue collar workers. But, you know, when they go to the bank, the money's been the same. But y'all know that. Blue collar really works with a hand, if you will. I encountered a blue collar man just yesterday. And he said, preacher, what? I saw my uncle do this, cut hair and 
He said, I realized that he had a ball of money. He said, I, I knew he wasn't a drug dealer, but <laughs> all that money he had, once he was, by the end of the day, doing hair. He said, that, I decided to do that. Now he has his daughters doing hair, and he does hair, and, 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 and people in, quote, an executive world, in the corporate world, will look down on a blue-collar man. But all the time to go to the bank, blue collar men have more money than they do, amen? <laughs> and we must be careful about that. This man, he hid his talent. God has given us so much, so many talent in, in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse number 6, 7, and 8, where it says some people have the talent to give, and we have different talents that God has given us. And guess what? God has given us all at least one. All, you, you, all at least one. And God wants to use that one talent that we have. But this blue-collar worker yesterday, he threw me out of his barber shop. Threw me out of his barber shop. Because when he got through with my hair, I was uh, talking to him about the Lord and, and, and everything. He said he wanted, he's going to look at me on Facebook. He want to come sometime. And then, then he said, you don't owe me a penny. I said, no, no, no. Uh, you want to take. No, I said, well, let me give you a tip or something. No, get out of my barber shop. He threw me out of his barber shop. Amen. Wonderful heart. You gotta be careful how you judge people. Yeah. What zip toe coat they live in. Yeah. What occupation do you have? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you not know you can be a loan officer and nothing to do with loan officers in the bank? You have been a, you can be a loan officer and, and, a, and a person doing a blue collar job can make more money than the loan officer, even though the loan officers ran money all the time. Not their money. Right. Right. Why y'all get quiet right. on this morning? Amen. Don't you ever look down on a person unless you're looking down to pick them up. Mm-hmm. Yes, London and I, we were in uh, our cemetery uh, years about a few months ago. You know how some of our young people, uh, he said he's IT and she's IT and they're showing his father's grave and everything. They, they look down on us. Mm-hmm. They look down on us. And then they, they oh, it's a grave right here and had to have paperwork this way and everything looking down on us. I told them, they just, they just don't know. We belong to Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> we are in the righteous class. Yeah. No matter whether you're a blue collar, a, 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 a white collar, a no collar. Right. When you're in Jesus, you're in the righteous class. Stop looking down on people. They're so particular. And yeah, 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 she stay at home three days a week and she work and I do this. Man, come on. <laughs> Death is an equalizer. Job chapter 3, verse number 1 and 5. Job said the young would be there. The old would be there. The rich would be there. The blue collar would be there. The white collar would be there. And even the people that don't have a home on the street, y'all don't hear me this morning, they would be there. Stop looking down on people. So, well, uh, you see, I have a degree in so-and-so-and-so, but I, I'm not working in my degree yet. I'm on this job right here. I don't like this job. Just, just, just stay the course. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. you may not ever work on your degree job. Things don't always work out that way. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But whatever job you're on, the Bible tells us, you know, we know that work, that is an intrinsic value about working. Sometimes, no matter where you work, when you come home, you feel good. You feel good that you have gone to work. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. When you get to heaven, uh, God's not going to ask you, well, what job did you do down there? How much money did you have in the bank? How much money did you leave? Who brought nothing into this world? You can't take anything out. Well, God giveth and God taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Stop looking down on people. God looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. I'm almost at my lesson. It's all right now. 1 Samuel chapter 16 once again. 1 Samuel chapter 16. David. A man after God's own heart. But Saul, that's a transition here. Saul is, God is going to take the kingship from Saul and give it to David. 
In Luke chapter 6, verse number 46, I, I see Saul not only like the one town of man, but I see also Saul in Luke 6, verse number 46, why call me Lord, Lord. See, Saul was a religious man, but David was a regenerated man. But, and so we are regenerated. I'm going to show you that shortly. But, but, but here, it's almost like Saul calling upon the name of the Lord, but he's not doing what God told him to do. We're that way sometime in Luke chapter 6, verse number 46. Why calls me, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that you ought to do, I told you to do. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. Now everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that do the, here goes now, the double I L L. He that do the will of God, my Father, which is in heaven, that's the one that God embraces. You can talk that talk all day long, but you don't walk that walk. God knows your heart. No, oh, he knows my heart. Yes, he does. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Song we sing, is thine heart right with God? Let me, let me show you another passage of scripture. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. And, and, and so Saul was like this in, in 2 Peter chapter 2. And you all probably got this mark in your Bible already. 2 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse number 20. Saul would liken unto this situation. The Bible says, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 20, but if after they had escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. In other words, once we have escaped the pollution of the world, because we're in the world but not of the world. You're going back to the world. That's, and Saul, Saul was like that. You know, he, instead of him moving on and embracing God and moving on toward God, uh, he was doing his own thing. Look at verse number 21 in 2 Peter chapter one, uh, 2, verse number 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Yes. That's a sad commentary. Yes. You know the truth. You came out of pollution of work. You, you were dirty, and God washed you. He cleansed you. First mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9 and following, you know, you were uh, infeminate and all the different things and adulterers and all the different things. And, 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 and many of us, we were like that. We, well, you know, some way, I didn't do all that, but you lied. And lying is a sin. All have sin. Then he says in verse number 10 and 11, verse number 10, chapter 6, verse number 9, 10, and 11, he said, but you are washed, you're sanctified. Mm -hmm. You're justified in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We were like that. And then listen at that. Now you, you have come out of all of that. You've been washed, you've been sanctified, and then you're going back into this old crazy world. Mm -hmm. Going back into it because the world... It, it's, you know, the sounds of it and all that is it getting to you, you know. I, you know my cousins, uh, you know, we have a family group text, and I hope they're listening to this. It's all right. Uh, we have a family group text, and, and you know, they, they set up different meeting places and all that. And just the other day, they set up going to the comedy club in Atlanta and all those different things. And, you know, those people don't say, the, they, don't, they don't preach gospel. <laughs> They say some words that we don't need to hear. Mm -hmm. How would I look sitting up in a comedy club and hearing all that dirty language? <laughs> some places I'm not going to go with my family. Right. We're going to family picnic. We'll eat together. But some places I won't go. Like my grandfather said, I ain't going. Right. Right. I ain't going. Right. It's a world, isn't it? Uh -huh. And that's what a Christian has to do. You must make up your mind to follow Jesus. Look at verse number 20. Look at verse, verse number uh, 22. The Bible says, But it, it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his own vomit, and the sow that was washed uh, to her own wallowing in the mare. You can imagine going back to that and going back to the mud. Sad commentary. That's, that's what Saul had done. 
And that's what we do when we reject God's direction, when we reject God's will, when we do our own thing. Saul, it's a tragic picture in the Bible. Saul was religious, but David was regenerated. Look at Titus chapter 3, verse number, verse number 4. Look at Titus chapter 3, verse number 4. David was regenerated, and Saul was religious. We've got a lot of religious people, but they're not regenerated. And we must watch that even in the Lord's church. You, you want one foot into the world and one, one foot into righteousness with God. You can't have it that way. Like the lady told me in London a few, a few months ago, we were at the hamburger place, and, and we wanted the hamburger. She said, this is not that other hamburger place. Have it your way. Amen. <laughs> she got us straight. <clears throat> Sometimes we want to have it our way with God in his situation. <clears throat> Listen at Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse number 4, the Bible says, For after the kindness and love of God, I was saved to what man appeared. Not by works of our righteousness, no. No. All have sinned. David was not perfect. He was not perfect. We'll see this later. He was not perfect, but he was repentant. He repented. Not by the work of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, we, he, what did he do? He saved us. According to his mercy. We're saved by grace in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8 and 5. Not by works, our works, but by God, love. By the washing, li- listen at this, verse number 5, Titus chapter 3, verse number 5. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's how he said, you know, we are regenerated. He says that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So he regenerates us, doesn't he? Because he wanted us to know in verse, look at verse number three. He wanted us to know something. And I don't forget this at all. He says, for we ourselves also were sometime foolish. David found himself at one point foolish. Disobedient. David found himself at one point disobedient, but see, Saul was disobedient and did not repent of what he had done. Deceived at one time. We were deceived. I was deceived in the denominational church thinking that I was in the right place to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was deceived. My parents were deceived. But then it caused me to be, continue to stay uh, deceived because the Bible says you love, you don't, do not love mother and father more than me. God, well, he want to be first in our lives. Yes. Serving divers lusts and pledges. Yes, I was. Living for the weekend. Y'all need to stop playing that song, Living for the Weekend. <laughs> living in malice and living in envy hateful I was hateful at times and I know just just me and not none of y'all y'all, y'all y'all came out you know David said I was born in sin and since it was a world of sin and, and uh, we all are and, 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 and so we must realize who we are and, and, and then uh, consider who we are notice this now hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. That's how we were regenerated. What about Saul and David? Saul was a religious, religious man, and so many of us were so religious. But we don't bring about that regeneration, that, you, you know, the righteousness when we repent. Every time we do wrong, we have to repent of it. David would be in heaven, but not because he was without sin, not because he was without sin. We, we obey the gospel, take faithful to death. We'll be in heaven, not because we were without sin. It was only one in Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 14 through 16. It was only one, and that was Jesus. He was tempted in every point, every point, one, two, every point, yet without sin. But David would be in heaven. 
not because he remembered. He said, I have sinned. I have sinned. David went a while before he repented. Maybe this morning you, 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 know, you know you need to repent. But you're still holding off. But what if death knocks on your door? It could knock on your door any time. Where will you be with the Lord? Ten years old. Young boy had asthma and his mom cried like a baby the other day because she could not be there. She wasn't there when he passed. He was there among his other siblings. Ten years old. Very young. But that same ten-year-old boy been buried that Friday. The lady that had her son, the son was shot at Walmart here in Fayetteville on that next day. She was at that funeral. I didn't realize that. That uh, 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 cemetery. She was, she was at that funeral. Not knowing that the next day she would be burying her son at the same cemetery, just a few feet away from that one. And she comes in and she said, sir, I thought that it would be, I'd be burying, my son be burying me, not me burying him, 18 years old. I thought I'd be burying him. But God has put us in the right place, the right spot, because we have we have the truth, and we, you know, we have the answer to life. It's right here in the Bible. We have the an answer to comforting folk in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3 and 5. We comfort them because we get comfort from God. We're able to comfort them. We're able to comfort one another. Honestly, I don't know how she was standing and able to do what she did in trying to get the funeral situation Arranged, arranged, but her best friend was there with her, thank God. You just never know, do you? And she said, sir, I'm, I'm driving, that white car over there, that's his car. And every time I get in it, when it happened, I had to go to Walmart in order to pick his car up. And, of course, the young lady that set the situation up, she's in jail with the young man that did it. And the young man, they found him just a few days later. He ran away. But you know that old saying, you can run, but you cannot hide. Right. That's right. Two lives messed up. Then the young girl, you all know she was eight years old. She got shot in the face during that time period. And the young man that died, he got shot. He shot, got shot in the back. Sad commentary. And you think you're going through a few problems? I don't think so. In my little problems, my little tears, I, I can just wipe them away because people are going through so much, aren't they? And your job and my job as Christians is to tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus. Notice what happens here. David would be in heaven, but not because he was without sin. But he could not live long from God because he had a heart for God. What about you this morning? When you find yourself in sin, do you hold off and try to live long from God? Remember in Acts chapter 8, it is Acts chapter 8 when the sorcerer Simon had obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ in verses number 5 and following. And when the apostle came down and showed the power of the Holy Spirit, Simon wanted that power because he was a sorcerer. You know, that's what he did before he obeyed the gospel. He wanted that power. But the apostle told him that this is not for you. It is not to be used that way. Listen what the apostles tell him. They say, repent of this thy wickedness, this thy wickedness. Sometimes we, 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 we just walk over that sin, don't we? we? We just keep walking over the sin, and we need to repent of it. Amen. What Simon had to do, he had to repent of this, that wickedness. What about that situation that happened last Wednesday, and you have not repented of it, you just keep walking over it, but it's in your mind. It's in your mind, and you can't get rid of it because God has given us, in Romans chapter 2, verse number 14 and following, he has given us a conscience. And it's in our mind, Brother Barry. It's in your mind. Don't let it stay in your mind. Just, just, just repent of it. 
Repent of just our wickedness. And so David, David, he had a heart for God. He had a heart for God. So should we have a heart for God. In Romans chapter 6, verse number 17, the Bible says, from the heart you have obeyed this form of doctrine. From the heart, we'll obey the gospel from the heart. In Matthew chapter 22, verse number 37 and following, love God with all the heart, soul, and mind. With every all our being. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5 and 6, love God with all thy might. That's everything. That's all that we have. That's every with all that we have. Why can't we present our bodies to God as a living sacrifice? Why can't we give God, give back as we prosper because he's been so good to us? Why can't we give God our time? Why can't we put God on our schedule? As London and I were passing by Chick-fil-A, you know, this Chick-fil-A in Hapeville, it's the first original Chick-fil-A, and, and then it's all over now. But you know what the owner did, what Truett did, and, and what he wanted to do, because he was, quote, a religious man. He said that he wanted his employees to be off on Sunday to be with their family and worship God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. We need to have that same mindset. I'm told that his children, once he had left, some of them were trying to open up on Sunday to make more money. But thank God they haven't opened up on Sunday again. Amen. 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 And we need to make way on our jobs and everything we do. Whether it's a white-collar job, blue-collar job, or whatever kind of job it is. We need to give God our best, do all we can to not to work on Sunday. That's just, that just truth, isn't it? Because this world is going to pass away. And the question would be, what did you sacrifice for God? He sacrificed everything for you. He loved you so much that Jesus gave his life on the cross. He sacrificed him. Sometimes we can't sacrifice nothing for the Lord. It might take getting another job. It, it could be analyzing our finances, whatever it is. I'm speaking to everybody this morning. I preach with no, no fear, no favor, because God's going to deal with me if I do, if I start doing that. So that's what we need, a heart for God. That's what we need. You know, if we have a heart for God, we'll be like the people in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 1 and following. You know, even it was during the time of famine, you know, like in our world would be a time of recession, and, and even given that, they gave back to God so much beyond their means. The Bible said they gave themselves first. That's what it takes for us. Give our heart first. Give ourselves to God completely. That's what he requires, and that's what he deserves. Don't y'all think so? You know that you are a Christian. Now, notice this now. You know you're barking up the right tree, if you will. You know that you are a Christian because you are miserable in your old ways, in your sinful ways. When, when you go back, you know, to the world, and, you know, where you used to be and what you used to do, when you become miserable and you want to run back, you want to run back to the Lord because it's miserable out there in the old way you used to live. When the his, Houston used to say, Reva, I want to run to you, and that, that's one of them, right? You know, we want to run to God. Isn't that right? Because it's miserable out there. Sin will tear you up, will ruin your life. Notice, let's go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. I want you all to look at 1 John chapter 3, beginning at verse, verse number, verse number 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 4. You all see now why I had to do part two and part three, maybe. I don't know. First John chapter three, verse number four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That's what it is. It's crossing over. Also, it's missing the mark. Romans chapter three, verse number 23. Uh, you know, all have sin comes short, you come short of the glory of God. Remember, we just throw dots 
And then sometimes the dot would not hit in the bullseye, it would fall short. Sometimes it would fall to the floor before it hits the bullseye. Sometimes our lives are that way. We fall short of missing the mark when it comes to what God has told us to do. Sin, in James chapter 4, verse number 17, for him that knoweth to do good and do it not, to him it is sin. We sin in so many ways. We sin in thought, we sin in action. Is there any hope for me, preacher? Yes, it is. There is hope. Look at verse number 5. First John chapter 3, verse number 5. For ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins. In him is no sin. Yes. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Mm. Ouch. In other words, if you continue in your sin, you, you know, I love the Lord. I, I, I love you so much. He said, you love me. Keep my commandments. Right, right. John chapter 14, verse number 10. Verse number 10 through 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. I love the Lord. And you just abiding in sin. And you letting the same sin over and over get you and tie you down. Don't do like Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse number eight. He that committeth sin is of the what devil? The devil. John chapter eight, verse 44. He's a liar. The devil and the father of lies. He becomes your father-in-law. He becomes your father. I don't want to be my father-in-law. That's why you need to marry the Lord. You marry someone not in the Lord, they got a different father-in-law. They, they don't have a righteous father-in-law. The devil is their father. That's why we encourage people to marry the Lord. Stop hanging around people that, that don't do not gonna obey, not gonna do God's will. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. If you if you stop wasting your time with them, God will send you the right kind of person. But we have to be living right to do that. Look at verse number ten. The Bible says. Look at verse number nine. Let's go back to verse number eight. For this purpose, the Son of God has manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever, verse number 9, verse John chapter 3, whosoever is born of God doth not commit ooh, sin. Born of God, a word and spirit. Baptized all my past sins, washed away, 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17. Now I'm a new creature in Christ. Why should I go back to the old life? And this children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. You can't separate the kingdom of God and righteousness. Matthew 6, verse number 33, seek your first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things be added unto you. You cannot separate that. He says, whosoever not righteousness not God neither he that loveth not his brother uh uh going down into your relationship with your fellow man how can you love John says your brother your God whom you have not seen and hate your brother whom you have seen that is the relationship that we have in the ten commandments four first command four first four deal with your relationship with God and the next six your relationship with fellow man and you cannot be going around hating your brother or sister and say you love God. Can't do it. So we must have a balanced faith that we have. We must, it must be balanced. And David, of course, he had a balanced faith. He was a man after God's own heart. You know that you are a Christian because you are, when you feel like you're not living right, you know, you you do the right thing. I appreciate 
in the Lord's church, how we give people opportunity to make it right with God. I was in the hospital years ago in the emergency room with one of my loved ones, and, and I was talking to the lady beside us about the kingdom of God in, in church. She said, I know, I know about that church. I know that one in Locust Grove. She said, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. She said, I've been there before. She said, you are the church where people come forward and repent. I said, that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> well, we make it right with God. I want to be a part of that church, don't you? And then I ask my brothers and sisters to, to, to pray for me because we have repented before we come forward. We're just asking for prayers of the righteous. That's all. Because we know God hears the righteous cry. So John, 1 John 3, verse 4 through 9, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or know him. So David comes back. And repent, Saul keeps on sinning, doesn't he? He keeps on sinning. Even, you know, he starts wanting to kill David. I mean, he's just evil. He just keeps on sinning. And so we see that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, Saul, Samuel poured himself, and this is what breaks our heart as parents, Look at 1 Samuel 16, verse number 1. Samuel had poured his heart in, into David, I mean into Saul. He, you know, like, like we do even when it comes to our children. We pour our heart into them. And when it breaks our heart, it's a sad commentary, isn't it? 1 Samuel 16, verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? It's a sad commentary. When you get rejected by God, you are rejected. Amen. I have rejected him. Then he goes on to say, He says, Fill thine horn with oil and go. And I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, might, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Now we know where they come from, from among his sons. Now God does not look at the heart. He does not look at our appearance, though, because as Samuel goes, you know, he, his mindset is like the kings that reigned earlier, you know, so tall and looked like a leader and all that kind of thing. That's, that's his mindset. But that's not God's mindset. You see, Samuel was still mourning the death, the situation of, rather, of Saul by not reigning. Look at verse number 2. In verse number 2, in 1 Samuel 16, verse number 2, and Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take and heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. So, in all our lives, there comes a time when we must stop grieving. There comes a time in all our lives. In all our lives, that there comes a time when we have to make a transition in jobs or whatever it is. Sometimes it's hard for us to do, but we, we must work together with one another, encourage one another to do that, because that's, that's the benefit of being in the house of faith, isn't it? In the household of faith. There's one of my, I, I'm so thankful for the older women in the Lord's church to be able, in Titus chapter 3, verse number uh, 2, verse 3 and following, they're able to teach, they are to be able to teach young women how to love their husband, how to love their children, be keep it at home and be discreet. And it, it's chaste and it's so wonderful. The benefit we have in the kingdom of God. God has, he has set it all up, hasn't he? And they will help our uh, young women uh, to make transitions, you know, in, in a child and distance, because they've been there before. And then, then it says in verse Timothy chapter 5, verse number 8 and following, that it, Paul says, now the younger women, you all need, you need to get married if you can. Get married, have children, and be guys to the house. See, God has, has all worked out, all worked out. It's, it's in the Bible, isn't it? It's in the Bible. But David, 
David, of course, of course, would be the one that Samuel would choose. The Lord said, how long will you grieve? It's time to take care of business. Samuel is on. Samuel never used the word king at this point. All was used for the consecration of priests. Verse number four. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, and Samuel did that which the Lord spoke and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town, they trembled at his coming and said, Cometh thou peacefully? And he said, Peacefully, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And I will come to, it will come to pass when I were come that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord anointed is before him. Because this man was like a rock star. This particular one song was like a rock star. And we all look at leaders like that, like this is going to be the one, this one, this one that God has chosen. Listen to what the Lord says in verse number 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Yeah. How many people have missed out on wonderful marriages because they're looking at the outer appearance. One of the sisters came to me and years ago, I'll never forget, a young lady, and she said, Brother Moore, she said, this particular guy, he, he doesn't look like the type of person I would marry, uh, but he has a good heart. Doesn't look like the type of person I would marry. You, you don't have to tell me that, <laughs> you know. God looks at the heart. If you love a person, you love a person. Amen? And looks can fool you. Remember that song, beauty is only skin deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, beauty sometimes is only skin deep. Sometimes you get to know that person, they're riding, brother Brooks, they're riding. Y'all wake up on me this morning now. Sometimes you get to know that person, they're riding from the inside out. God looks at the heart, doesn't he? He looks at the heart. So I'm not looking at the outward appearance. I'm, I'm looking at the heart. But David, according to verse number 12, he, he, he wasn't a bad-looking guy. Bible says, verse number 12, first Samuel chapter 16, verse number 12, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. So he wasn't bad to look at. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. For this is he. So here we see the example of Samuel is on a secret mission. And here people are immediately afraid of him. Verse number four. The son to be presented is Eliab. And, of course, David had, he had his good points about him if, from the world standpoint, right? He was not tall like the kings that they were used to, but he had the heart that God wanted. And choosing spiritual leaders sometimes, we need to do three things. We need to pray and and, you know, he needs to be, <clears throat> that person needs to be one that's not afraid to pray. Needs to be a person also is not afraid to weep. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus weeped, didn't he? Yeah. Must be a person humble enough to weep at times and pray and encourage people. Must be able to preach the word and the love of people. The elders in First Timothy chapter 3, remember they had to be husbands and one wives and be able to be teachers and love Good men show hospitality. Those are leaders that God has picked out in his word. It didn't say anything about how they looked. 
Isaiah 53, verse number 2, and following Jesus, he was not so beautiful to look at. If he walked through the door, some of you said, no, that's not, not my Savior. Because we're so concerned about how people look. One of the ladies at the post office one time I was studying with the people, and, and, and apparently she didn't like what I was saying. Uh, she said, you don't even look like a preacher. <laughs> how does a preacher look? <clears throat> Y'all have no idea what I've gone through in this life. Amen. <laughs> but I know God, Jesus has gone through more than I have. I've been through nothing. Look at verse number 11. Verse number 11. In 1 Samuel 16, we're going to be closing. 1 Samuel 16, verse number 11. Jesse calls him the least. Look at verse number 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto him, Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come help us. We won't sit down. Even his father felt like he was the least of all of them. That's sad commentary. No, you must look at your children all the same. You must love them all the same. They have different talents, different attitudes. And Lord knows sometimes they have some different attitudes. Amen. Right, right. But you are to love them just the same. Yeah, yeah. He looked at him as the least. In other words, his dad is basically saying uh, he would not amount to nothing. You don't want to see him. God looks at the heart, doesn't he? Yeah. Look at verse number 12. We're going to be close and we'll pick it back up. The Lord said, arise in verse number 12 and anoint him. God chooses in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8 and 18 and following. He, he chooses the foolish, the weak, and he chooses the least one that we think about. God does not think like we think. That's why sometimes get it all, people get it all messed up. They, and they, they look at, in the Lord's church, how we just plain, teach the plain Bible. And they, they looking for, they're looking for shows and jumping them down and shouting and everything else. They say, how can that save anybody? I tell you how the word of God saves. The power of God's word. He looks at the least. And I, and, and, and I know definitely he chose the least in me because, you know, I don't have any, I have a lot of friends, that father, preacher friend, that father was a preacher, a dead preacher, grandfather, uncle. And I mean, all in the line. But I don't have a line of preachers or anything. You know, they thought my father was a preacher and his son becomes a preacher, Amen. <laughs> Some would say, you're the least. But you know, it's not who I am, but whose I am. That's what I stand on, amen? I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I say that all the time, I'm nothing. Uh, he said, Paul says, who is me? You know, Paul says, um, we're just ministers in which you believe. That's all we are. That's all we are. Listen as, as we close. What distinguished David from his brother? from, from uh, Saul, the profile of a person. God uses a new heart. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. We're going to close with that. First Samuel chapter 13, verse number 14. Look at First Samuel 13, verse number 14. The Bible says, look at verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou have done foolishly, Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not, in verse number 14, 1 Samuel chapter 13, thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over the people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. That's a sad commentary in our lives. This morning, have you kept the commandment that God has commanded you? You can. You can. It's not too late. Right. By hearing the word of God, believing in all your heart, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ and being baptized. You know what we say when, when you come forward, you give the preacher your hand and give God your heart. Did you hear that? You give God your heart. Say, here I am, Lord. 
I'm, I'm giving myself away to you. I'm giving myself away to you. And we don't take ourselves back. We give ourselves away to him. You've been patient this morning. We, I hope and trust something has been said to make you become a better Christian, to put you on the road of being serious about God and not being critical about everything that you see because you don't have it all together yourself. Don't look at that person's countenance, but look at the heart. God peeps in at the heart. Some of us have missed out on some of the best opportunities, even when it comes to dating and marriage and everything else, because we want to bring to our family this person with all these good looks and everything else. The sister that told me, she said, don't you, don't you look at how he look, man. Like he, he's a good person. I said, I, I, I would never do that. God looks at the heart. And beauty is on the skin deep anyway, right? It's on the skin deep. And, you know, I, I say to Linda all the time, we talk about this all the time, uh, uh, you know, you can give me comfort, uh, uh, compliments all day long, and, and I, I don't accept compliments that well. I need y'all pray for me on that one because, because I know this. Remember I said the other, the other week that the brother and I, the preacher and I was talking about three things if a preacher lose, he can't preach anymore. If he lose his voice, if he lose his mind, and if he lose his reputation, he can't preach anymore. What if something happened to me? And God forbid, because this thing ain't going to happen. I have a stroke or whatever. I won't be this preacher that y'all, that y'all know, right? And, 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 and I, I, people won't look at me the same way. But God, he looks at the heart, doesn't he? Don't get caught up in how, how a person look and what they're doing, because you don't know what may happen tomorrow. I don't get caught up in all that. God looks at the heart. And you start looking at people, you look at the heart. Stop judging people like you do. Oftentimes we do. Look at the heart. Anything can happen. Anything can happen to you. You know, I, I see on those shows. Y'all see on those shows, Ready to Love and all that. I'm the full package. I got my looks. I got this. I got that. I'm a white, I got a white collar job. I'm the full package. Come on now. Anything can happen to your job. Anything can happen to your face. Anything can happen to your body. Anything can happen. And it will happen later on. Don't be that way. The full package is being fully devoted to God. And one day heaven will be your home. So come this morning with a sincere heart. Maybe you're out there, uh, you, you're a member of the church, and, and maybe you, you're still on the fence and coming back to worship inside the building. Come on back. Come on back. Come on home. Come on back. I'm tired of you saying that, preacher. I'm going to say it until I can't say it again. Come on. I'm going to say it until you come back. Come <laughs> Amen. <laughs> say it until you come back. Come on. Come on. Maybe you're not a member of the church. and You, heard, you have been hearing me over and over what to do. Yeah. Over and over what to do. Just do what God has told you to do. Yeah. That's our main purpose here. It, it's to do the will of God. It, it's to be God's household of faith. That's what we are. We want to populate heaven the best we can with many people we can. So Brother Mark is going to come forward with a song of invitation. Please stand. Song of invitation. 662. 662. 662. All to Jesus I surrender all. To him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. Render all. All to deed my blessed Savior I surrender. To Jesus I surrender, huh? The empty feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. 
I surrender Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee, fill me with Thy love and power, let Thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. To Jesus I surrender all, to him I freely give. I will never love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all, the all. Oh, I surrender, I surrender all, all indeed, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. We have one precious soul respond, Sister Reva Robinson. She repented her sin and asked for prayer intervention with getting Curtis blood pressure under control. You know, you have high blood pressure Man. Man. and it bothered him uh, to maintain his health. And also, Reva asked for prayer for her mental health and strength to manage the business, a uh, busy work week ahead of her. Man. You know, Man. Uh, she worked so much with, I think, the military people, children. Uh, she, she's an instructor teacher after that. Man. And she got a lot on, on her, so she asked for strength Man. In, in, in that field. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. I had a father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that was spoken to our ear that will also encourage us to be strong and faithful to you. Amen. We pray, Lord, for Sister Reba that uh, you forgive her sin, uh, remove them afar from the east and the west. We pray, Lord, that you encourage her also to be strong in her faith and can help her with her mental health and strength and on the busy work dealing with uh, her work uh, situation. And we pray, Lord, for her husband, Curtis Robinson, that it be your will that his high blood pressure will be under control and that he will maintain it, uh, be disciplined to maintain it under control. It be your will. Pray, oh Lord, forgive us all uh, our sins, for we know we fall short of your glory, and we also continue to go to you in prayer and ask for strength and courage, uh, for we know our strength comes from, come from you from above. Bless us all. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prayer hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper, Simon 313. Once again, prayer hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper, 313. Have it last scene. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross 
where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So watch your hair and rest the old rugged cross. Till my trophies and less I lay down. I will clean sit in old rugged crawl and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. We have come in this hour to commune with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As he said, do this in remembrance of me. There's a lot to be remembered about Christ. But at this time and this purpose, we will remember his sacrifice. Not just his sacrifice to come to this earth, but his sacrifice to die for our sins. The Hebrew writer says that a body was prepared for Christ, that it might be beaten, battered, and bruised on Calvary's cross. And thus, when we read the Holy Writ, that's exactly what we find that had happened. And as we partake of this bread, we remember that body, that it should have been us, but because of the love of God, Jesus took on that beating for us. As Brother Powell prayed for the bread. Let us pray. For heaven, grace and Father, we thank the Lord for this day. We thank the Lord that we come together on the table to remember your son, death, burial, and resurrection. We pray, Lord, that we take this bread and reference the body on that cross that was done by ourselves and taken in the way that was pleasing in your sight. Jesus, may we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we continue, not only was that body beaten, battered, and bruised, it was scarred with the scars of scourging, plus a soldier pierced him in the side with a sword. And the Bible says, out came forth blood and water. Acts 20 and 28 tells us that that blood purchase the church which is us it purchased the body of Christ that blood was able to purchase the church simply because it was powerful it was precious and it was sinless and for that we appreciate God making that sacrifice and therefore as we prepare to partake of this cup and we remember that blood that was shed that should have been our blood, but it wasn't because our blood is messed up with sin. Jesus' blood was not. Brother Marcus will lead us in prayer as we prepare to take the cup. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you, come to you first time to bow heads and humble hearts. Thank you so much for me the blessing you bestow upon life throughout the week and months and years of time. We also come pray this time, Heavenly Father Jesus Christ. We also come pray this time, thank you for the cup, rest of your son's blood, which was shed for of our sins. Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ, we continue to do this all as we continue to reflect and rethink back on the life that your son has shared on the cross. He lived a perfect life and with no sin, no guilt, and no, and, and no, and no pain this time. Knowing that he been, no, he suffered for all, for all rest of mankind, for the rest to exist today, to, 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 to know there's only one gospel that saved mankind. Come and pray and continue to be the sauce. We continue to partake of this cup, which is the true divine, the Son's blood, free hands, and true heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That continues the communion. Did we overlook anyone? Now we come to the part about giving. 
And if we don't know what giving means spiritually, all we need to do is consult Holy Writ. And it tells us that giving has to do with giving our all. Because John 3.16 tells us that. That God gave everything that heaven had to offer. There's an expression that people ask sometime after they've done so much for us. What do you want? Blood? Well, that's exactly what God gave. When he gave his son, he gave blood. We do not have a body fit to give. We don't have blood fit to give. But we do have a spirit that's filled with thanksgiving for what God, only God, could give. And so as we prepare to give of our earnings, let us pray. Holy God, you are such a gracious God. And we know that we don't deserve not one iota of what you give us. But because you blew your everlasting breath into us, you love us and you want us back with you. And we give out of knowing that, Father, out of believing that, and by manifesting that according to how we give to you. We thank you for these funds that you have blessed us with, and may they be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have four ways to give, of course. We know the drill. Online giving through Giffify, mm -hmm. credit card donations uh, through a phone call, 678-619-9930. Zelle, 678-232-3106. Cash App, Church of Christ, uh, Church of Christ ATL. And as you exit the building, before you exit, as we go out, you can put your donations or your giving in the basket right by the front door. Thank you all. Have a great day. Um, clone song gonna be here number 472. Four seventy two. Heaven let's sing. The Lord saw rock in him we hide a shelter in a time of storm. So could whatever ill be tied, a shelter in a time of storm. Don't you know Jesus is a rock in the living land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. One more time, Jesus is a rock in the weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in the weary land, a shelter in a time of storm. Amen. Let us pray. I had a father, thank you, Lord, for this day that we've been blessed with. We thank you, Lord, that all those who participate in your worship, sir, that we love one another and continue to strive to live a life for you and also that came together to worship you in spirit and truth. We pray, Lord, Lord, that you be with us as we depart this place and bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the visit on the right, and the visitor on the right, and the visitor on the left, you got one visitor. Can you tell me your name? Can you speak a little louder? We have Miss Allison, a neighbor, uh, right? Neighbor, Sister Jackie. Okay. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Thank you very much for coming, and we welcome you to come uh, anytime you 
you want, the doors will be open. You can come with Jack anytime you feel like it. And we appreciate your visit. And we'll meet you at the door. We'll greet you. All right, anybody else got an announcement? Okay. Oh, good enough. Okay. Also, a, remember, a reminder that we need to start bringing the food in because we got to get the baskets ready for next month. Uh, next month, we'll have our food drive for the giveaway. If anything else, nothing, nothing else, uh, you're dismissed. Okay, thanks. See you now. There it goes on the mic.